Welcome to the Prep Pigskin Report Podcast, hosted by Papa Pig himself, Paul Rudy. Welcome to PPR Podcast number 14. My name's Paul. Everyone knows Bert Grossman. Bert. Yes. If I said to you, who leads the NC2A all-time leading rusher, who would you say? DJ Pumphrey. And what do you know? He's, thinny, he's sitting between us. What, what, all right, dude, why are you wearing a Dodgers hat yeah, well, what on you a San to, Diego you, show? Yeah, you're trying to upset the fan base? Already. No, I know. I, I'm a big Dodger fan, not going to lie. Honestly, my haircut wasn't done. I just <laughs> grabbed the, near, the closest hat near me and put it on. Jeez, you cast a pail over the uh, conversation. We, we haven't <laughs> even started yet. Hey, uh, how you doing? I've been good. Just trying to stay out the way, trying to finish school and um, coaching at Bishop's now. Well, that's part of the reason why we got we you're in front of us, and we we are grateful that you are. But explain that to us. I mean, we, we know the theme of these podcasts, but how largely has been football is not forever, and right. you kind of you can talk to that with great authority, can you not? I mean, yeah. you you have a Super Bowl ring. You're one of the most successful collegiate runners of all time, and but you know an injury this that and the other thing and, and and it's over like can you talk a little bit about that yeah it comes by faster than you know it um, coming out of college i thought that i would i was just going to be the guy playing the league for for as long as i thought i would but it doesn't happen like that obviously it's a, a big business and and a lot of things happen like injuries happen better players come in and take positions all those things happen and um, and now it's just the second part of my life, which is coaching. Um, I, I kind of wanted to, I love the game and I wanted to be, stay within the game of football. So I thought, why not give my knowledge that was given to me to the next generation? Donnell, you think players, people, fans get too caught up on, you know, the measurables of I'm 5'8 or I'm 5'9 or I'm too small. No, I mean, you're the leading rusher all time in the NCAA, no matter how many yards or stats you put up. That's always forefront. Do you think that's overblown, like guys' size and, and speed? Oh, definitely. At the next level, they all think, well, it's really I, – I honestly think it's just the social media, the fan bases. They're the majority of the ones who, who talk crazy about size. But when you're within the locker room, obviously all those players, they, they know you're here for a reason. So you got to kind of have a reason for why you're there, you know, so – I, I wouldn't say that when I was on the Philadelphia Eagles, they looked past that because when I was in practice, I competed with them. I did everything they did, and they felt the same way. And, and Darren Sproles, he's a smaller guy, and I feel like he's a future Hall of Famer. Or, and he was at the Eagles same time you yeah. were, correct? Yeah, he was there the whole time. It's crazy as they drafted me to replace the guy. <laughs> he was there the whole time. <laughs> hey, well, speak to the injury. Was that – I can't remember the specifics. Was that a game injury, or is that a – or is that a – Hamstring, I believe. Yeah, I tore my hamstring um, in training camp. Yeah, I thought it was training camp, yeah. To, yeah, leading up to the first preseason game. And then um, I was out for, what, two, two and a half, three weeks. And I tried to come back for the fourth game of preseason. And it was just, it was very nagging. So I was never really able to to, to be myself when I was in the NFL. And, and, it, and it was tough because they tried to, like I said, they wanted me to replace Sproles. And I felt like that's not even my skill set. I'm more of a run in between the tackles, outside the tackles. Just, just I'm just a playmaker. And w with Sproles, he was more so of a third down guy. And, and, and it's just tough. I feel like he was one of the best third down guys to, to play the game, if you ask me. So a lot depends on not only the who, fit. The fit. Yeah, the fit. I mean, yeah. uh, you, and that's something as a, as a drafted athlete, you really – you can't control. You you got to hope you got you go to the right place. Yeah, we had eight eight running backs uh, on the team that won the Super Bowl my rookie year, so it was tough. And in my whole time in Philly, I had to compete against seven eight backs going into training camp every year. So that's not so. So how often do you look at that ring? Uh, not too often to be honest, because I, I have pictures. So <laughs> I mean, that's when I really look at it. I mean, my rings. Just sitting in the room, chilling. <laughs> so it's so like it's not some like I would wear that everywhere. I bet you. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question because Donnell, I I grew up in Philly and then I got traded to Philly. I think my sixth year or so, and I know what a rabid, crazy town that is. What is it like when they won the Super Bowl? Because I can't even imagine what that town was like then. Oh, it was the unreal experience. The fan base is it's probably the craziest fan base I've ever been a part of. 
Oh, it, reminds close, me yeah. of, it reminds me of a college fan base somewhat, but meaner. There are no, right. <laughs> like, like when I got to experience just going to the parade, it was ridiculous. Like fans everywhere. Like if I was to go to Philly now, I could probably go to the bar and they know exactly who I am and have, not have to pay for anything. That's that, different because they knew who I am, and then they called the police. And yeah, they so said different. Yeah, I got a different thing. There. All right, so now the coaching career begins. As as an athlete, do you feel you have a leg up on other coaches who haven't played at the level that you've played at? I wouldn't say that because uh, here at Bishops, we have a defensive coordinator, Cole Simons. He he's very smart. He knows the defense inside and out. But the only thing I would say is just just experience. I've I was able to be coached by guys like Deuce Staley who experienced playing the game as well as coaching the game and and just being in the room every day with him he gives me knowledge and, and obviously the older the vets they give me knowledge that I never knew coming out of college and and for me to be able to give the high school guys those same stuff like I feel like it helps a lot yeah did you find like because I remember my first year coaching uh, way back when in high school you know, you come from the NFL where it's as high as it gets, and then you go coach guys and you forget they're in high school and you automatically think they should be at this level. And it's like, why didn't you see that? Or why can't you do that? Or why didn't you pick oh, up that blitz? Yeah, why, why did, how could you not see that? Oh, did yeah, you, did I, you I, find I, hard with that, that adjustment where you had to dial it back a little bit? Oh, definitely. Just like the whole structure of practice is totally different because in the NFL, it's, we're trying to, we have a time limit. And obviously, the same thing as high school, but in the high school level, you can't really yell at guys like you can in, in the NFL because you got to realize these are teenagers here and it probably doesn't mean as much to them as it means to, to me. So that's what you got to realize at that high school level. But, but can you speak to the connection? Because I look back on my life and I have, did not have anywhere near the athletic careers that you two had, but I still think of back on my coaches as the most influential adults in my life, this side of my parents. Are you sure. aware of that relationship? Uh, I, one, do you can you relate to that having coaches that mean a lot to you, and then can you transfer that to me realizing that you mean a lot to these kids without probably you being aware of it? Oh yeah, most definitely. Because um, still to this day, I, I keep in contact with Hunky Cooper, who's uh, one of the receiver coaches at San Diego State. He was my high school head coach down in Las Vegas, and um, to this day, he he means a lot to me. I don't know where I would be. To, to this day without him I mean, he kept me from staying out of trouble when I was in high school and and just the coaches like since I was a young and like the coaches they they keep you out of trouble like they're the one, they're, they're they're with you more than your parents really yeah. like if you ask me and um just being able to coach at Bishop just seeing how the kids look at me and, and respond to the coaching like that just it means a lot and and for example when I um, did an interview with KUSI when we played Par uh, Francis Parker this year, just seeing how all, because they had me head coach in the freshman team this year, just seeing how all the freshmen were looking at me while getting the interview, like, that just, that meant the world. Like, wow, like, damn, I do mean something to these kids. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's rough, and you have to practice from, the, like, a half a mile from the Cove and overlook La Jolla Cove. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It's rough over yeah, there. Yeah, you're really, you're La Jolla. really grinding. <laughs> <laughs> why, let me ask you, why, why did you, because we talk about this a lot, why did you pick San Diego State? We talk about that a lot with players. I chose San Diego State because I'm originally from San Diego. My whole mom's side of the family is here in San Diego. Um, I grew up playing Pop Warner down in Mira Mesa and at Claremont with a couple guys I went to college with, Trey Lomax and Addison Morrow. And they committed to San Diego State, so I felt like I, wouldn't, I didn't get to play high school ball in San Diego in front of family, so I were why not come for college? And I feel like I wasn't I wasn't really big recruited coming out of college, obviously because of my size, but and that connection with Co Coach Cooper and Jeff Horton, because Jeff Horton was Coach Cooper's college coach, and just that connection, um, and Coach Coop basically told him to to take a chance on a kid, and he did, and the rest was history. I had no idea he was from San Diego. I didn't know you grew up here and played youth football. I didn't know it at all. Yeah, my mom went to Madison High School. Oh, wow. Wow. Who you, got the, who you got this week, Madison Lincoln? That's crazy. My grandfather went to Lincoln. Uh, that's the one game I'm going to go to this week. But I got I got to roll with Madison. Whoa. Whoa. All 
right. Got to rule uh, Madison. It's you will get some great hate game. mail, just so you know. There's going to be a lot of uh, eyeballs on that game because there. I don't have to tell you about all the controversy and this, that, and the other thing. And oh yeah. I mean, and, and it's tough to beat someone twice. Oh, really for tough. sure. I, I mean, I see the guys that Lincoln has, but I just feel like Madison, just the way they're playing right now, they're they're playing really good. You, you, we're, let's tie the two uh, questions together. How come San Diego State doesn't go after those guys? You know, the guys that all end up at Oregon. I, I saw a tweet on tweet on Twitter about all the wide receivers that have gotten away from, yeah. you know, like from uh, the kid at Miami. Oh, God. Keyshawn. No. Keyshawn. 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 Jeez. He was only a silver pick in finalist. And uh, you could just go Olave, blah, 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 and go around the horn. And five of the best receivers in the country are playing elsewhere when they should be playing here at San Diego State. Why can't the Aztecs land those kids? Um, honestly, I would say from the past, was more so just because of our scheme. We ran a pro-style offense, and we ran the ball 30, 40 times a game. And as a receiver, that isn't – it's not really appealing to me if I'm a receiver trying to go to San Diego State. I mean, yeah, you can't beat the city. and You can't beat being at home. But obviously, you go to college, you want to – and you want to be able to get to the next level. You want to be able to touch touch the ball and, and see the ball. And, and now I feel like with this generation – they feel so that they need to go to SEC schools or, or the higher conferences to be able to be seen. But in reality, it doesn't matter where you play at. They're gonna, like, there's scouts all over the world. They're going to find you no matter what. So they would have to change the – you know, you say pro-style offense. It's really not a pro-style offense. It's like a, well, it's like a Newt Rockney. Yeah. Right. Four yard, it's like a <laughs> Woody Hayes four yards in a cloud of dust offense. But what's crazy is they're trying to – like. It seemed like the past two years they tried to get away from that to to move more so to a spread so that they can respect that pass offense, but they're still trying to run the ball out of that. <laughs> yeah, and if which you're obviously a, you got great well, deals. The problem is you have to recruit a kid who can sling it too. I mean that's those, exactly. those kids aren't a dime a dozen. I mean they're, 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 those kids are rare and, and they all. And, and to answer like the question, you, if you have Olave, I mean, you look at Olave, he's up for the Heisman. He's up for every award there is. He's going to be a first-rounder, and he would have been blocking at San Diego State pretty exactly. much. Exactly. Unless, of course, you recruited Tyler Buckner and got Tyler Buckner to stay here as well. But I, I, think, I, but I, grew, up, I grew up in Philadelphia, so Temple was, you know, everybody said the same thing about Temple. Why aren't they getting all these Philadelphia guys? They had Bruce Arians was the head coach, so it wasn't the coaching. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of it was the style of the way they played, and, and it was similar. They didn't get a lot of people at the games. And, and when you're in high school and you go for a visit and you go to an SEC school or a big school and there's 100,000 people, and mm -hmm. then you look, you know, at 10,000 or 3,000, that means a lot to you kind of. And, I, and I think uh, you can speak to maybe if there's something about getting away from home that's part of the college equation that you want to – you don't want to – I don't know. I, I, I Nobody wants to get away from San Diego. I understand getting away from Philly or Detroit or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but, but just to get yeah, away, from, you, you want to try something different. I, I imagine that's part of the equation, too. Oh, yeah, most definitely. That's that's honestly what I think. I just want to do something different. Because, I mean, being in San Diego, to to me, it started with that 2010 class with Dylan Baxter, Tony Jefferson. Because I to this day, I, I still talk to Tony Jefferson every day. And we talk about that all the time, like, and I talked to that with Moses Mooney because Moses coaches with us at Bishops as well. And we talked about, like, if we would have been able to keep that 2010 class in San Diego, that would have probably set, set it off for, for San Diego State. But, I mean, they're 9-1. and one. Hasn't it been set yeah, off? They're still are. not getting the buzz, though. Yeah, yeah, they but, are, but they, they just weren't getting no high recruits. But, honestly, yeah. I think it will change more so because they, they got a new stadium being built. They have a new locker room on campus. All that, I feel like the buzz around that with this new generation kind of sets it off. And even if it's only 35,000, the buzz of having every seat full oh, yeah. and it being loud. I would have loved that playing it, in front of that. Yeah, just to have a home field advantage, you know, instead of every, exactly. everybody's call being echoed, you could hear. When do you yeah. think that changed? Because I, when I got drafted in 89, San Diego State was out drawing the Chargers. Like, I would go to their games and be like, why aren't yeah. games like this? But, I mean, they were getting – was it because you're playing USC and Miami and everything else? Yeah, was, let, no. Don't underestimate Marshall Falk and don't estimate – But know. that was his freshman year, and nobody really knew about him at that time. But they were still putting 50, 52,000 in at that time before they expanded it. And I just remember going to those games and being like, wow. Because it was even bigger than Pitt. It was bigger than anybody. I just think the football experience at the Q was not a good one. In the, the, yeah. You know, those multi-use stadiums just don't convey well to sight lines and being – close to the action yeah. and I just think the mm -hmm. the you know the football experience while you'd endure it for the Chargers you weren't willing to endure it for a college game
even when the Chargers were in it, like it was never really majority Charger fans. <laughs> no, no, especially at the end, it was always. I mean, they were using the silent count at home. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when do you become a head coach? Honestly, I have no idea. He's uh, coming probably. out to help us at the All Star game. I, yeah. I made him come our, out on our staff. Well, yeah, I'm with him on recruiting for the opposite staff. <laughs> well, I, but I mean, I don't want if you stick your nose into the special team business, I, I, we're, we're gonna I have words. I don't know fighting between you two. <laughs> you no, know, because uh, special teams are mine. Well, as far as you know, <laughs> this is like radio. Go watch, go watch that movie over again. You'll see it right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can help the special teams. I bet you can. I'll get you a new radio. We will arrive at the ball. We will arrive at the ball with enthusiasm. I like that. All enthusiasm. Right. <laughs> All right. So, you I mean, is that the plan, though? Do you, do you want to become a head coach at some point? Um. Yeah, one day. But what's crazy is my goal was to coach at the college level down at San Diego State. They were They wanted me to shadow this year. In coaching and then the job came about at bishop so i had talked to them and they said yeah take that as your experience type thing because i'm grad i graduate this december from school so i but i never really honestly thought i would love coaching the high school level to be honest like i'm falling in love with these kids like and i just want to see where they go from where they started you know so but i i do one day want to coach at the next level that is that is my ultimate goal do you go to the games, the San Diego State games? I haven't been this year. All right, see, that's the problem. You're the all-time leading rusher, All-American, two-time yeah, Mount West Player of the Year, and you don't go to the games. How's Bob yeah, and Sue supposed only, to go? But it's a nine-hour well, game. because it's been in L.A. Yeah. So I haven't... Well, you got the hat on already. I, I thought with the hat, you just, you'd already be there. <laughs> yeah, good point. I thought you were living there or something. <laughs> He's even got the Dodger chair behind him. Look at that. <laughs> well, it was because, you know, as a high school coach, you coach on Fridays, and then we yeah, have you to break down the film on Saturday mornings. And by the time that, you don't want to be stuck in traffic driving to the San Diego State game. But I'll definitely be at every – San Diego State game once they'll be in San Diego. Fair, fair enough. Hey, uh, let, to give us some, uh, teach us. I'm a, I'm a running back, and I want to make the team. I want to be uh, the, your uh, first option in the backfield. What it's are the not going to happen for you. I'm just telling you right now. It's just not going to happen for you. Just say somebody hey, else does. I, I'm, I'm 220. Some of these high school kids right. are not going to want to meet me in the hole. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> How are you going to help Paul? Go ahead. What, what, what am I going to learn from you? What are you going to teach me right off? Ball security, what, what's the first lesson? Well, the, the very first lesson is, before I even teach ball security, any of that, like, I huddle my running backs up, let them know we're the, the we bring the juice every day. We're the hardest workers. I should never have to tell you to finish. Never sh should have to tell you to put in effort. Like, that type of stuff sh should not be coached whatsoever. But for, for a guy that was transfer if, if it was a running back transferring in maybe four star guy I would kind of tell him when ball security obviously um, I tell my guys five points of the ball um, which is the forearm your your hands your your bicep um, your armpit and your chest that ball has to touch all those and if I was a bigger back for you I would say lower your shoulder. <laughs> meet that guy and, Damn right. and that's what i try to tell my backs now if you hit them one time they're not going to want to come back for anymore and especially at the high school level and at that point you have them where you want them you could try to make a miss because they're on their heels at that point all because you load your shoulder that one time i, I they tell a story at lincoln high school about a freshman by the name of marcus allen who got tackled one time in a freshman game by from a linebacker from morris i think the kid tackled him one time, and he quit football <laughs> right there. He left He left the field and did not want to have to be tackled. Well, there was I, – I, I mean, you just look at the running backs now in the game, and I, you're probably not old enough, Donnell, but when I was, you know, at Pitt, it was Craig Ironhead Hayward, 290-pound tailback and could run. <laughs> then you had to come, and it was Christian Okoye. It was um, Nate Tromines. It that's was – it was, you know, Bettis. yeah, Bo Jackson. I mean – those were yeah. concussion protocols like every week, but it's, it's kind of yeah. changed now. You don't have big backs to punish you like now that you, now, now the emphasis seems to be on quickness and, and ringing the bell. Yeah. Which is why your style's not going to work. <laughs> You're not, yeah, well, you I can't be a running back anymore. Well, Roderick, uh, Robinson, he's a bigger back. Yeah, but he's also he's also got an extra yeah, gear. I got a feeling he might beat me in a foot race. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> so your, your advice, 
uh, are you married? Do you have kids yet? Are you? Uh, I have two kids. All right. So are either of them boys? I have one boy, one girl. All right. So when your youngster grows up and wants to play football, what are you going to say to him? Give it your all. Um, but I, for me, I would probably be a father before I even try to coach. I want him to co be coached by someone else before me. I wouldn't want to coach him to the high school level, but I would just give him little pointers on on how to be great and just and, and take those those steps going forward. Obviously, be the hardest worker. Um, when when it comes to conditioning, because when you win in conditioning, that that to me that gets the eye the coach's eye. They they look at all that stuff and um, play all the positions that you can be or that you can play. I'm still worried there's going to be a little tension between you two at the, the All-Star uh, game. Just, just let me <laughs> let me coach no. my thing. All right. I'm all right. Uh, can you share with us your fondest football memory? Was there, Take us into the huddle one time when you're thinking, boy, I, it, it's going to be hard to replicate this. What's crazy is the, the one moment I do remember is my sophomore year. We we're playing against we we're playing in the Poinsettia Bowl against Navy. It was a game we lost 18 to 16, I believe. Um, I got a carry that ended up breaking Marshall Fox single season record that put me at 1867. And when I went back into the huddle right, th right there, knowing I had to play another play after that, I was in tears and it was just a happy experience. And, and just seeing the offensive line and the, the receivers and, and the court and our quarterback embrace me in the huddle, like that, that would be a forever moment I cherish as well as obviously winning the conference championship, the two conference championships we won. Those are definitely special moments. So that moment, so was there a moment also where you became the, because I was at the Point Bowl, I remember that one, but when you became the all-time uh, leading rusher in NCAA history, was there like that moment? So you have more yards than Ron Dane. Uh, <laughs> technically. Well, yeah. well explain, wanna... explain the confusion there. The confusion is back in the days there was they didn't count bowl games, so it wasn't a statistic. And if it, if they did, he'd probably be at like seventy nine, or some some crazy some crazy number because he probably had a thousand yards in bowl games alone that they didn't count for him. And it changed probably in what two thousand late two thousands, two thousand five six, and now. Shoot, I'm the leading rusher in college football history. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, God, when you, I mean, it's just it's so you could walk. That's a big deal. Think and of it, all the it, people that played this game. It still has not hit me. That's what's crazy. It has not hit me. Like, even going back, watching videos of it being done, like, it's like it hasn't hit me. And I don't think it will until, like, I get older because it almost got broken two years ago. Yeah, I know. By Jonathan Taylor. And that was. And now he's tearing it up for the Colts. He had a whole another year and was like two, three hundred yards away. Now be honest though, when it when when Jonathan Taylor's getting close, are you like you got like a voodoo doll out and you all nervous? Or are you are you like cheering him on? I was on the ESPN app, like constantly updating my phone. <laughs> definitely obviously records are, are meant to be broken and, and I respect the guy like Jonathan Taylor just to see the conference that he is and just see how he did it, like two thousand, two thousand eight, eighteen hundred, like that's like, it's tough to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, have you ever met Ron Dane? I have not. The only, I've I've talked to him one time, and that was after I broke the record. And it was it was just on Twitter though. Was he cool about it, or or was he saying, "Hey, really, dude? It, it's a it's funky math we're using now." <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. I mean, he was cool about it, but he obviously feels like he still has the real record. <laughs> Which, I mean, I respect that because I mean, like I said, it's tough to do. Hey, you're an elite company, no matter how you count it. So. Uh, no, no one's going to ever take that away from you. And, and, and Ron Dane was a beast, man. You, I'd say your achievement's more significant because you had to do it with 50 less pounds. Yeah. And, and the moment that I, or the best thing I remember from it is the guys who I kept passing throughout the year who are all favorite running backs of mine, like the Danny Tomlinson, um, Darren Sproles, um, Barry Sanders. Like it's, like the list goes on, it's just it's a crazy list when you look at it, and just to be able to be at the top of that list, like it's it's unreal. All right, well we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, your your parting words to high school football players out there, teach them something right now. Keep going, keep chasing that dream. Um, 
run track, please. <laughs> Those are the most explosive athletes. When you run track, you'll end up being crazy in football. And that's where Reggie, I got that from Reggie Bush. And Reggie Bush is probably one of the best San Diego athletes to come out. So keep going. All right. Hey, thanks for doing this with us. Minus yes. the minus the hat, this was a good conversation. Yeah, <laughs> Donnell, I'll send you the uh, the the schedule for the All Star Game too. See which one. Yeah, most make. definitely. Let me know. I will. Thank you guys for having me. You bet. And if he gets paid more than me, no, no, you're 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 the top guy okay. out there. Yeah, because you're special, also playing special, in the game, right? Uh, special teams should be thought of as a coordinator. Are you returning kicks too, or not? No, I'm just. Gonna... Okay, I'm just sure. <laughs> Take care, young man.